this is uh, this is a real privilege, uh, Tamo. I'm, I'm so glad to chat with you about uh, about the last the last victim. Yeah, my pleasure, man. Thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, I really do appreciate it. First of all, I have to say, uh, I love your work. And uh, my wife and I were huge fans of Battlestar Galactica back in the day. Nice. Um, you know, really felt for Hilo and, and his baby. Uh, <laughs> you either loved Hilo or you hated him. It was one of the two. There were moments of both. I'm not going to lie. There are moments of both. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but, uh, no, this is a great project. I, I had the chance to speak with, uh, Naveen the, the other day. Amazing. Yeah. Um, and it's just, he's a great guy and the film, yeah. I, I really do think it's, it's awesome. Um, I, I was wondering, what is it that attracted you to it? Um, I mean, you know, most actors will tell you, uh, number one, it's the script. If you read a fantastic script, you're usually very excited about it. And, you know, especially if, you connect to the character in some way and sometimes you don't even connect to the character you think this is something i haven't played before i think i can do this this is a challenge i want to do it that wasn't really the case with this mostly for me i found out who was attached right away um being a big fan of ali being a huge fan of ron perlman like i, I, I remember being a, a child and seeing ron perlman in um was it to make a fire to make a fire it was, one, it was a movie done in the 80s. It was all about like the first man, like the first first time the man, you know, got fire. Uh, Ron was very young in his career and I was just a kid. I've been a huge fan ever since. And then Ralph, I've been following Ralph's career for years now. And man, he is astounding. You cannot take your eyes off that guy when he's on camera. Not only does he have this like um, infectious, booming tenor voice, he's just this, incredible powerful actor man i mean there's some heavyweights involved in this in this project so uh any opportunity to work with actors who you respect their body of work you're already a fan of you usually jump on board right away well you know it's interesting you say that that was one of the things i noted about the film is that you know like you know for a film release now it could have been in theater it could be in theater some places but films on vod then not a lot of them have great casts but this one really this does this yeah one, um from top to bottom um, I was wondering from your perspective, you know, uh, you have a lot of time with, with Ali on screen. Um, what do you think that she brings to, to the film? Well, I mean, Ali being the lead of the film, she brings many different things. It, when you meet Ali, I'd been familiar with her work, but I'd never met her before. Right. And uh, I was, uh, I was pleasantly surprised in some ways and other ways. Uh, it just all made sense. She's incredibly confident, but she's also really gracious and kind. But, you know, Ali's, uh, Ali's been in the business for a very long time. And as a woman in the film business, to have a career as long as she's had, um, you know, it's, it's going to build up some scar tissue, man. This, this game is not easy. And uh, even being as beautiful and charismatic and smart as she is, it's a tough game and it's a tough ride. And it takes years to really find a, a place. And the fact that Ali's been able to navigate such longevity in her career and continue to do things and still have that work ethic that she has and doing different side projects all over the place. Like I heard she's got her own wine going on right now. She's written cookbooks. She's a dedicated uh, partner, wife and, and mother and, and very passionate about her children and her family. Uh, that speaks volumes about who she is. So when you get someone like that as the lead, um, their characteristics, those characteristics that stand out, they really set a precedent on set. And I know that when she arrived, I saw a lot of the crew who were really scrambling because this is an independent project. It was shot in a short amount of time. There's always a um, challenges involved with that and a lot of stresses right before you start production, right? Last things, last minute things are trying to be done. You know, costumes isn't right. You know, set deck, we have this issue. There's a location problem, what have you. But when your lead comes in, and she sort of she exudes that uh, that uh, that charisma that that even motherly attitude that she had she was so kind and gracious to everyone i could i i felt on the very first day that i was doing the uh, uh my wardrobe fitting and alan came in i felt everybody take a big sigh of relief mm. because um you know unfortunately in this business some actors can be incredibly difficult to work with and they might be divas they might be difficult uh when they come to set but when you have someone like that come in on the very first day and make a point of going around and saying hi to everyone and making them feel calm and secure you know that you're going to have a good shoot 
or at least it's going to be as best as it can be because that person is setting the tone and the precedent. Um, so yeah, I mean, I was, I was, uh, I was more than encouraged after meeting him the first day. And then Naveen asked us specifically to really, um, discuss our role, discuss our relationship beyond the script. And, uh, you know, we took the opportunity to do that. And I was really excited that she was open to that because some actors aren't, they like to do their own thing and come in and show up on a day and you guys do the dance on the day. Some actors just aren't into preparation, uh, with another actor, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, that, that's why I said you can tell because the two of you have uh, have some some great chemistry uh, together on screen. Yeah, I think we got each other's sense of humor right away, and uh, I really appreciate Ali. She's cool, man. I I uh, hope that I get to work with her again down the road. Yeah, that's great. I, although I, I won't be taking any suggestions for you from a roadmap uh, or or sites to take. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Richard, take him out of the city. Take him out of the city and. Damn, Richard that, really paid for that, didn't he? <laughs> we just want to see the world's largest anything, and then uh, yeah, he's you know he's a big kid in some ways. He just had to <laughs> had to see that damn thing, which got him in a real bad way. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure his wife's still mad at him about that whole situation. <laughs> sure, but you know it's interesting because like you talk about being prepared on the day of. Was this a, a challenging place to shoot? Because I mean, this is rough terrain. This yeah. is all all in a really difficult area. Um, it's you know, it's obviously not on it's not on a set. Well, it is on a set, but not on a stage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, listen this this uh, this area of Kelowna. You know, they're they're shooting in the hills and the desert areas. Uh, you know, there's trees. There's 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 small clips. There's there's hazards all over the place. Ali has her share of doing action features and big budget ones. So she knows how many hazards are involved. And it doesn't matter how good your stunt crew or stunt coordinator is, how prepared everyone is. It is so easy to hurt yourself on set when you're filming any sort of action um, or outside of set, even on location, like we talked about, especially when you're out in the wild. It can be as simple as, you know, there's, you know, luckily stunts is is really good at like sort of going through and identifying hazards while you're say running lines or doing some other things and saying, hey, there's a specific rock here you might trip on or there's something where you might, you know, you might trip on this or you might hit that or watch out for this low hanging branch. But you still gotta be aware on the day. And as an actor, you have to go through it yourself and really like plan out your steps. Say if you're doing, you're running away. Like I had one scene where I'm running, you know, we've encountered the bad guys and I'm running to warn my wife. That was a hazardous little hill. There was a ton of things. The timing involved to coordinate the fall, to hit the mat, to avoid the rock, because if you hit that rock, you're going to hurt yourself really badly. Um, there's so many factors involved, and it's so easy to hurt hurt yourself. Um, this, the area where we were shooting a lot of those scenes, there was a ton of little hazards, man. If you tripped, you were going to be falling off down a significant hill. If you weren't careful, you'd poke yourself with a sharp stick. So luckily everyone was aware and a lot of people had some experience um, with doing things like, you know, act, action type scenes, active scenes out of the, so uh, people were people were on point. And uh, at least when I was shooting, uh, nobody got hurt, but um, there were scenes that I saw that I just stuck around to watch because they were so interesting, mm. but there were real challenges in terms of that because of costume and what have you. Like there's a scene where I, I uh, Ralph was doing a scene where he was wearing, you know, a significant headpiece. Yeah. On the day we were trying to figure out what to do with it because it, it wouldn't stay while they were doing oh, that very gosh. active scene of Ali, you know, kind of attacking him. And, and I kept suggesting, because it was the middle of the night, Allie's sitting there wearing a slip. She's wearing a tiny little dress. It's freezing cold. Ralph has no shirt on. He's got all this makeup on, this massive piece on his head. And uh, no one could quite figure out at the time what to do. And I remember suggesting, I was like, guys, I'll go in. I will hold this. If, if I'm behind Ralph and you can't see me, I'm going to hold this thing in place so you can finish this one part of the scene. Like, we can do this. So I think at one time I was MacGyvering it and then maybe we got to stick, you know, these are just things that you get involved with through years of experience where you've right. done something similar and you've got to just get the shot. So, um, yeah, I mean, I just, I had a blast with these guys. It was, it was a lot of fun. It was a good crew. It was challenging at times though, you know, as these independent films are, it was, uh, these guys were grinding, especially Allie, uh, especially the guys doing a lot of the chase scenes, you know, Allie, uh, 
I know she really beat her body up, but she's she's one of those actresses. She committed 100% and went for it. Yeah, it's it's a very physical performance uh, yeah. across the board for sure. Um, you know, I, I was really thinking about the idea of, of the Western. I was talking about this with Naveen the other day. Um, and you've been in, I, I, I think, you know, we talked before about Battlestar Galactica, which is its own form of Western. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering, first of all, why you think the Western, we keep being drawn back to it, but also has it changed? Because this is a very different style of film than say Galactica ever, well, it wasn't a film, but uh, the series was. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Westerns have always been popular. I think, uh, I think with um, a, considering a lot of settler communities, it just makes sense, especially in the American South, because, you know, that's, that's a large portion of the population remembers that tumultuous and difficult time when, when uh, you know, North America was settled by Europeans and it was difficult, you know, the indigenous were fighting uh, passionately on many different levels to, to, to not be exterminated. And there was a concerted effort to, to get rid of them in many ways. But these stories were passed down. These are, these are uh, you know, there's, there's, people look at these times and, it, and really consider um, how formative it was to where the country is now. And I'm speaking specifically about the United States. There's some, there's some sort of mystique about how wild and crazy it was back then, how tumultuous it was, how trying it was for people to come to this new world and survive and, and uh, you know, lay claim to land and try and farm and, 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 uh, and give themselves better lives from, than what they were escaping from. Um, there's a real mystique to it. And I think, uh, I think a lot of us who were old enough remember how big uh, Westerns were in the 60s and 70s and some of the great, uh, the great Westerns from back then. And you know, you've even got some significant directors and actors who, who came from that era who are still, still at it, you know, people like Clint Eastwood. And uh, there's something about the mystique of it that uh, really draws, draws people in. And uh, I know when a significant, like a good Western comes out and it's not often they do, but when you've got a really good storyline and a good script and good actors in a good Western, they usually do really well at the box office because uh, people line up to see it, man. They want to see it. You know, when you mentioned that Battlestar was in some ways like a Western, it's interesting because I've, you know, I did that show a long time ago. Um, but, uh, you know, I've, I'm still doing press about that, that television series. It's so, uh, it's so respected and still spoken about in, in relevant terms today. Um, but I've never heard it referred to that before. And it's, it's really interesting take. I like that. I think there's definitely similarities, you know, it's, it's about conquering a new world. It's about, uh, you know, uh, survivors, uh, uh, leaving, uh, you know, uh, hardship and, and, uh, and trying to find a new place to call their, their own home. So I guess there are similarities. Yeah, and when it, I mean, not to get not to get off on that rabbit trail, but I mean, it, when it came out too, I mean, that, that was the early early millennium. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's sort of captured that vibe. <clears throat> that, but, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh man. Yeah, it was. It was during. That's right, because the the war was happening at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, the war was happening. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, well, you know, it, it's interesting too because in a film like this. Uh, one of the one of the things that I uh, see, and again, Naveen and I were discussing this, the idea of of darkness is very heavy in this film. It's a very dark, dark piece. Um, even in fact, I think there's, I think Ali, you know, it's a, it's in jest, but there's a scene where we, you're first seen together, and she says uh, to the dog, "You're the only good boy that's here," and uh, it, it's sort, of, but that that one line sort of goes throughout the film. Mm. Interesting, um, you know. There, there's, there's, there's no good. <laughs> what? There's not a lot of good. There's not a lot of good, good people in this. I was just wondering, from your perspective, like, what does it mean? But there, actually, it's interesting. I think it's your character that passes her the lighter. Yeah. It's flickering lights, but so, what does it mean to you to find light in the midst of that heaviness, that darkness? I think, you know even though you don't see a lot of it, I think, um, I think the relationship between the two characters is he's very much that light for her at times. I think he probably drives her crazy at times also, but there's a reason that she's drawn to him. She's a very bright woman. She's an anthropologist. She's a professor, you know, anthropology. She studies, studies human beings. She studies culture. She studies man. 
Uh, so uh, I think that's very telling of her character that she's she's always trying to investigate uh, human beings and understand them uh, and probably understand herself better. But it's it's clear in the in the performance and choices she made, and and also I think it's written on the page that she has very severe OCD. She deals with her own uh, mental health issues, yeah. and um, there, I, you know, that, it's really a question for Naveen, but. I think many of us these days, and not to contradict myself before I even make my point, but I, I know that Naveen was trying to make this script for a very long time, but you could argue, considering that we've just gone through a pandemic, considering how tumultuous uh, political affairs have been in the world, especially in North America, but you know, on a, on a human scale, on a, on a global scale, how tumultuous it's been for years now, how divided people feel, how uh, little, you know, sort of um, respectful discourse there is anymore that uh, you can see that uh, in some ways this film is really quite relevant because a lot of us have felt completely in the dark and we can't find the light. It's hard. And the irony being for human beings in some ways, in many ways, actually, we're living better than we've ever lived mm. in history. There's more food. We live longer. We have better access to health care. Uh, uh, education. There's there's so many things that are actually going well for us, as opposed to say 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, a few generations back, and yet we're still struggling. Where mental health issues are are arguably worse than they've ever been. So uh, you know maybe that is a commentary that he's he's touching on in this film. Is that uh, you know and especially with Ali's character, she's struggling to find that light to keep going. You know, uh, as many of us are, we're always looking for those positive things that can really drive us through because there really feels like there's overwhelming darkness at times and that there's little hope. Yeah, and I, I love the fact that you you brought, addressed that because uh, her mental health issues, because it, it's not it's not one of those things that's a major plot point of the film, yeah. but it certainly affects her character throughout the piece and just another another heaviness on her heart yeah uh, as she's as she's on the run and uh i mean of course with what happens with your, your character it's not gonna make it any easier but um that's no. it, it see it, it it's such a that's what it, it almost it feels like to me is almost the wild west even though it isn't mm -hmm. or, you know it's um there's it's just it's it's a film about surviving or it it's feels like surviving. About surviving. Yeah, I think it very much is. And again, just back to my point, I feel like, you know, again, it's a, it's a, it's a bitter irony. It's weird because, you know, in at least in the West, human beings in a lot of ways are doing better than they ever have. But the, the people are really, really struggling with depression and, uh, and finding the way and finding the light right now. And uh, we need to overcome that as a, as, a, as a species. Like we need to come together and, and make some improvements. Unfortunately, is it for all the the incredible things about social media the, the overall i think there's more harm that comes from it you know there's a there's a lot of superficiality and a, a lot especially towards kids like i'm a parent and um, you know i'm constantly worried about these uh the images what these kids are inundated with i, I mean i'm even guilty of it I, you know i go online sometimes you go down these rabbit holes of just wasting time staring at ridiculous things and they're they're not real and uh, it's it's not helping us uh, communicate better. And I, you know, that could that could be another commentary that you know Naveen's making, and that's in this script. It's like that we really we really need to find better ways to communicate, you know, uh, or else um, you know humans un unfortunately can act out in really violent and in, in, in strange ways, as does uh, Ralph's group of uh, outlaws. And uh, they feel that they can only deal with things in a violent way uh, instead of trying to work it out, you know, instead of taking responsibility, accountability. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's, yeah, for sure. Like the way we communicate nowadays, um, absolutely, it absolutely affects all of these things. Yeah. yeah I think you're 100%. Um, you don't give a chance to anybody else anymore. People, people just, uh, they write people off, you know, they write people off without hearing their opinion. They don't really try and understand. It's, it's hard for people to find common ground anymore. And that's really concerning, man. It's really, uh, it's a really sad reality of the way things are right now. And I, I really, um, 
really praying that we're trying to come, that we come through that. You know, I, I personally am trying to exercise a lot more patience than I ever have, especially with people who have different opinions than mine, whether it be politically, socially, or on, you know, contentious topics, like you name it, uh, as of late, I'm just trying to be more patient and more kind. And I know, um, you know, here personally where I am, um, you know, masks have been off for a, a significant amount of time now, you know, a couple months, and people are finally sort of relaxing into it. And I've really noticed a huge shift in just the way people are communicating with each other. I know for the last two and a half years, going into a store or a coffee shop or what have you, and and it was just, it's trying, it's trying. You know, it, it's it's interesting you say that too, again, like, you're you're not in the scene, of course, but at the, the, the film even ends without giving too much away. Yeah. on a note of grace yeah almost almost, almost. i mean yeah. it's not well i guess it it does i mean it is a cup of coffee or whatever can in this particular film means a, a, a tremendous deal yeah um with everything yeah. that's gone on beforehand yeah um and yeah i think uh you know this is this is why we we love the cinema this is why it'll never go anywhere we we human beings by nature are we're we're empathetic creatures we need to see and communicate with another human being we need to listen we need to be present uh unfortunately because of technology we're taking it really in one direction and so many of us are spending so much distracted time that we can't even have a normal conversation like you and i are having where we're completely present and i'm not checking my text and my social media and my email while we're trying to have a conversation uh that doesn't make anybody feel special it doesn't make them feel important. It just uh, it furthers that uh, that uh, that um, distance between people and um, and uh, alienates people even more. And I, I just uh, cinema always brings us back to it. The reason we go to cinema, the reason we watch other people's stories, is because we want to connect with them. We want to see our own story and our own struggles in those characters and going through them. And that's why, regardless of where a film is from or what culture it's in or what language it's in, we can always see these images on screen and connect to them. Right. That's, you know, uh, especially after this last two and a half years, I think people are just dying to go see good movies. And that's why a film like this is going to do so well. I've always been a big, big, big fan of thrillers. You know, I love a kick ass thriller. And you got a, an amazing, uh, uh, intelligent, badass beauty like Ali Larder, you know, taking on some baddies and, and surviving in this horrible environment as she's being hunted down by the, uh, the likes of uh, Ralph Ennison and his gang. And, and uh, Ron Perlman on the job trying to save the day. I mean, the, the, you've got uh, you've got most of the elements for an excellent film right there. Well, I, you know what? I you're speaking my language now when you start talking about the power of story because that's that's my thing. And uh, I I like to refer to uh, actually I refer to Pirates of the Caribbean, which you're you know we're not talking about that today, but but the yeah. parlay when they talk about parlay, yeah, it's that safe space where sides yeah. can come and yeah. say, okay, for a while, we're going to negotiate, we're going to talk, have a language yeah. together in that safe moment. And I yeah. think film does that. I think stories do that. They, they help so provide those opportunities. Yeah, it's so true. And it's more important now than it ever has been. Hmm. Arguably, you know, art is always important during times of extreme duress and, 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 and miscommunication and tension between uh, countries and, and, and war. This is when art is more important than anything. We need to hear each other's stories. We need to empathize. We need to sympathize with other people's struggles and, uh, and understand that, uh, you know, we can't be ethnocentric. You have to understand that some people see things a different way and you have to be respectful to a point, to agree to disagree. That doesn't mean that it, have to, it has to end with war and, 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 uh, and canceling people and, 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 and you know, uh, just aggressive vitriol because it it's just seems to be the first thing that people drop to now and it's, it's unfortunate. We have to get back to understanding and being sympathetic and soft with each other. Yeah, man, I, I, I am, we're getting out of time. I am so grateful for this conversation. Uh, oh, me too, man. It's been just phenomenal. Just as we wrap up, I'm wondering what, you know, in the midst of this story, what do you hope people connect with uh, through the film? Um, I think to your point, and you really brought it out of me, it, I think, you know, we've, it's been a real struggle these last few years for most people going through a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, film is a beautiful thing. I hope that we connect with these characters on many different levels. 
uh, we connect with the fact that, you know, a lot of us have been going through dark times and that uh, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Sometimes it's hard to find it, but keep fighting, keep fighting every day, try and find the good and try and get through it. Um, um, I think, uh, I think, uh, I think people will enjoy this film and they'll see that, uh, that storyline come through for sure. I appreciate that. And I so appreciate the chance to chat with you. Uh, thank you so much. It's a great film. Uh, looking forward to it. And I hope, uh, I wish you the best with it. And uh, we'll thank you so much. Again. Yeah. Thank you for the interview. And uh, I look forward to talking to you again. Great. All right. Thanks so much. Okay. Man. Be well. Be well. Thank you. Bye-bye.